Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out the last episode. If you're one of those people, if you're one of those people, thanks so much for coming back. But for those of you out there who are new to the show, welcome. Feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer, soda, coffee, water, tea, whatever the fuck you want in the fridge. Cheers, my friend. Amen. Cheers. Yes. It's a lovely, lovely Sunday afternoon. It's beautiful out. Yeah. The weather's been great. And I am sitting here today with a person I haven't seen in quite some time. It's been a few years. You're home away from home. You're here from, <laughs> you know, the the far off distant land of Buffalo, New York. It's a frozen tundra of <laughs> disparity and, and villainy and a bunch of other superlatives. Everybody makes some noise. <laughs> Kevin Delgado. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so, for everyone that doesn't know you, what do you do? You're a man of many hats. Yeah, um, I do a lot. Uh, I'm a rapper, producer, artist, uh, illustrator, publisher, designer, <laughs> father, um, homeowner. <laughs> hell yeah, you're fucking doing I it, a, dude. I own a car. <laughs> Shit, hell yeah. Yeah, man, just throw it at me. I got, sure, I got it. <laughs> so I know you from the hip hop scene. Yep. That was, you know, we met each other, you know, 13 years ago, probably yeah. like 2007, uh, yeah, 2007, 2008, because yeah. you're actually on my first album. The yeah. first track on my first album, you're the guest verse. I had um I had a line about <laughs> oh shit. I'm trying to think. Uh I'm trying to think of what the reference was. Gary I had a Gary Payton reference. Uh -huh. Like the running back, I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so a lot has happened, a lot has changed in in those times. Back then, I don't remember you doing art a whole lot, but I also didn't know you too yeah. much outside of the rap scene. So when did that all start for you, the art shit? Well, I was here. I lived in Pittsburgh because I was going to the Art Institute when we met. Um, so I was doing art, but it wasn't, you know, I was, it wasn't good. You know what I mean? I was like tagging and stuff around the city, like some dumb bullshit. But, um, but yeah, I guess I had grown up, you know, I was a student of like X-Men, the animated series and Batman, the animated series. And I was big into the comics and like at an early age, cause I had older sister and she would like, just give me like, you know, McFarlane's like Spider-Man run and, yeah. you know, stuff of that nature. So I was I was big into that. And then, you know, when I became a teenager, I was more interested in girls and stuff. So I kind of like got away from that. But then when I was back here and I was going to art school, um, I started getting back into comics like at that part. And I would go to Phantom of the Attic in Oakland. And uh, I was like just reading like uh, Joss Whedon, Jonathan Cassidy's um X-Men run because it was like amazing, you know, and so yeah, it was kind of low key. So it was just from then till now has just been getting better at art and, and pursuing it like legit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's cool to have, you know, that escape and not to have all of your eggs in one basket, because I think that, you know, if I didn't have the shit that I did outside of the rap stuff, I'd probably go crazy because it's so fucking hard. Yeah. Trying to do. I mean, anything. Yeah. But like music in particular is just like a fucking nightmare. It is. And I had gotten to a point, you know, probably about six years ago. I had I had a record deal like I was performing and touring and doing all this stuff. You know, I'm probably skipping ahead of a bunch of years. But anyways, I got so disillusioned by music. Like I just didn't want to do it, you know. And then at that point, I actually got into an accident and I broke my back and I was, you know, I was like kind of fucked up on drugs that they that they had prescribed to me and everything. So I was trying to like get my shit together. And one of the things my my friend um, Brandon Pesco, who used to shoot my videos and stuff, he was doing like a hundred photos a day challenge. So he's like, do a, do a challenge. So I started. I did a Marvel hundred characters in hundred days, right? So every day I would you know do a different character, throw it up on Instagram, whatever. But it taught me discipline. And through that, I was able to kind of like get my shit back together. And, you know, I just started doing way more art because I was I was training myself to do it every day. Yeah. So it just kind of snowballed from there. And then following that is 
pretty much when I started to develop Volantis. Okay. So, so when was this when the accident happened? What time? What year was 2015. That? Okay. Wow. So that wasn't that long ago. No. And it was like, dude, I was in a back brace for like months. It sucked. You know what I mean? Like you can't do anything. That's You're fucking like, wild, dude. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. But uh, if there was like an impetus for me to like wake the, wake up and like get going on stuff, it was that. It's like, dude, I could be dead tomorrow. Why? I haven't even like started my legacy. You know yeah. what I mean? So with all of the comic shit, you know, I've noticed that you're doing like, you know, in-store signings, being very a, a public figure. Mm -hmm. You're trying to be. Yeah. You know, did a lot of that maybe come from kind of like that music background, the rapper background and being able oh, to push yourself? Completely. And, you know, I'm going to get back to that, but I've been listening to a lot of like um, comedian podcasts yeah. and like their stories. And it's like when I listen to comedians tell like stories about the road and everything, I'm like, dude, that's rap. It's yeah. the, that's the rap game, like completely. So I, I can connect with them on that level. But yeah, I mean, a large portion of my audience is through hip hop. Uh, a lot of my clients are through hip hop. And to be honest, I'm a self publisher. Like I don't work for anyone, you know, so I have to do is I have to do everything I can. Like I realize that. And I, I only say no if like it's just not worth my time, not worth there's not money in it. Like yeah. I hate to be that guy, but it's like I get hit up all the time for artwork and people are like, how much do you charge? And I give them my price. I'm not doing it for less. Like I'm trying to give everyone a, a good deal, but at the same time it's like these are this is hours of my life. Yeah. That's so valuable. Yeah. No, it it's it's the thing that I've found over time when it comes to art and doing art for people, it's like, if I'm not charging what I think this is worth, mm -hmm. I'm not going to want to do it. And then if I don't want to do it, I'm going to do something that's half-assed. Right. And then my name's going to be out there on some half-assed shit that I didn't charge enough for. Like I'm losing on every single right. level possible. Yeah. Instead of just like charging what you want, feeling like I can, oh, like I can take the extra time to do this because I'm covering myself for it. And I'm, I'm putting out something really good. That's going to help me get more clients in the future because they're seeing good work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you're only as good as your last project, right? So when I think about that, I think, well, my last comic that I put out was Valanis eight. It's obviously my best work. Cause I've, I've gotten to that point where I'm, I'm just always improving musically. The last project I put out was Green Giant, which a lot of people really liked. So I'm really on like a high pedestal for myself for those two. And I'm like, I got to do better than each one of these, you know? Yeah. So I, it's a strive for perfection that pushes me to just keep going and, you know, just make the best thing I can and make it worthwhile for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to, if someone's going to pay for a project I made, I want them to not regret it. You know what I mean? I want them to be happy with it. Absolutely. The other thing that just kind of sucks too about being in this like in between, you know, is like, you know, that like your work is worth maybe a little bit more than what like your typical clientele at your level is ready to pay. Mm -hmm. But like finding that way to still find the people that are willing to pay that money so you can get to that next level. It's yeah. like that weird, that fucking ceiling. It's There's so music it happens in music too yeah. in terms of like getting paid at shows and shit it's i mean the money's there you got to find like you said you got to find it but you know it'll happen when you least expect it you know i'm doing a project right now i can't really speak too much on but um it's for a pretty big you know organization they paid up front and i'm you know, doing okay you know Tight. so now it's just i got to line up my ducks in a row after that so i can really pursue this like as a legitimate career. Yeah. I'm like right at that precipice. But at the same time, there's projects I want to do that I'm not <laughs> even able to do. So once again, it comes down to if it's not worth my time and money, I, I can't do it. I'd rather not get paid for a month just so I can work on something for me. For sure. You know, because I need to, or else I'll go insane. I hate everything. Yeah. And, and it'll show. Yeah. It, it becomes really, really complicated when, you know, the things that you're passionate about, you're passionate about art and drawing, you're passionate about music, but now you're relying on those as like income. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, you know, when back when we were fucking around for the first time, you know, like 13 years ago, yeah. making our dumb little shit and in school and stuff like that was my escape from the world. Right now. It's like now I'm doing music. I'm doing art, doing this like this. This is my life now. Mm -hmm. This is what. So 
there's no escape anymore. Yeah. But also like, that's kind of what I was trying to work towards. Right. Like that was the, the, I, the end goal was to be able to do this shit all the time. Yeah. But like you were saying, if you're not like keeping up with this shit, it's so easy for it to fall off. Like you got to be ready. Like always thinking like, what am I going to be doing next, 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 yeah. next, instead of just being like, Oh, I'm here. I made it. Like you yeah. can never have that mindset. It's, it's so it's kind of tough to balance that out too. It's like so right now I have Green Giant 2. It's basically wrapped up, but I got to record, you know, another song. I got to get it mixed and mastered. I got to chop it, put it together. Yeah. I'm working on the album art and, you know, I got videos I'm planning, I'm shooting. I've got, you know, releases I'm trying to figure out. It's like that in itself is is basically a full-time job. You know, then I got this project I'm doing for this organization, it's like, it's a, that's a three month long project. When I signed the contract, I was like, I need three months to do this. Yeah. So I'm on a time frame for that. I want to keep doing Volantis because I had it on a strict release schedule. I was releasing a book like every five to six months. So right now I'm like way behind on that. And then I have another project I'm very passionate about that I wrote the script over the summer and I I have, like, have nothing. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I don't have the time for it. So, and then I got to take in, you know, freelance gigs when they come in. Cause I, I got to, you know, earn my keep. And it's like, man, I like to take a nap once in a while. Sure. Sure. No, <laughs> you know? I think that it's real easy sometimes to, for people like you and me, where I feel like I relate a lot because we do a lot of the same shit. We have similar interests and probably similar work ethics and like drives mm -hmm. where we want to do all of this shit. But like, we also, I don't know if you feel this way, but I have a hard time accepting help from other people. Like I always want to be in control of every little nuance yeah. thing that I'm doing just because I've been fucked over enough. Yeah. And like, but there's only so much we could do. Right. So it makes it really hard. It makes it feel like, Oh, everything's taking forever. But like, I'm a bit of a theme park dork. And like, I'll like watch a lot of documentaries on like Disney and the Disney theme parks and shit and like how the stuff was built. And it's like, if it fucking took D Disney, you know, 15 years to build one ride or some shit like that, maybe I should give myself a break for taking an extra year to work on an album or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's always so many little steps and without having that extra help, even with a big network, like somebody like fucking Disney, you know, it's like even they're like, fuck, we can't do this. Yeah. It's like, there's only so much you could do. Just focus on, I think having like a positive outlook and a being happy and healthy in the moment with whatever you're doing and right. just always just being ready to move on to that next thing. Even if it takes a little bit longer, you, you produce most of your music, right? Yeah. Everything. So, okay. So in my, my end, I work with producers. Like I, I'm, I, I make beats, you know, I'll select samples and give it to like a producer or whatever. And I do that a lot, but most of the time, you know, I've got, I'm in a group called Mindset, right? Yeah. I'm in a group called Green Giant. So Badfish is the producer for Mindset. He sends me like six beats a week, right? CG, who I'm in Green Giant with, sends me like X amount of beats a week. It's like, let me craft. Let me get to it. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like like you said, you need that time. I, I don't force art. I've got to a point where I've trained myself to be productive Fairly consistently, but if I'm not feeling it, like I don't need to do it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people should realize that. I mean, you should be disciplined enough to, you know, get a verse done in a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to want to pursue rapping as like an actual thing. Um, but man, yeah, it's just, you gotta, you gotta, your body's going to tell you what's right. You know what yeah. I mean? You got to listen to that intuition. I think sometimes it might be easier for people like us to where if I'm not feeling one thing today, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like drawing anything today. Yeah. It's easy to be like, well, I got that song I could work on or I got that video I can edit. Like I could be productive. It's not hard for me to find something to do. Right. But I understand there are some people where it's like maybe all they do is rap. Like they love it, but they're not into it. And then all of a sudden now it's like they don't have anywhere else to put that energy. But their yeah. body it's like, I'm sure that fuck that could really fuck with your main, your brain. It can, but however, I never have like, I never have like a clear table. Like my, I have a million things to do. So even if I'm not feeling inspired to write or yeah. to draw, like I have pages to color. Yeah. You know that's what, I mean? that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I think there's like, you know, not everybody has 
wears all the hats that yeah. like, you know you might so well, it sucks I mean, uh, it does suck <laughs> i would love to do an album uh because you know over the past i'd say like five years i put a band together like a backing band for my rap shit right and now it's just a band right you know like we work on all the music together i still like put together all the basic ideas for the beats and i'm like this is how i want this to go but it's not just like a solo thing anymore it hasn't been in a long time but I, I would love maybe, you know, a year or two down the line to do like a solo album again and actually finally work with other producers and just have it be more of like a laid back chill thing where I can collaborate and yeah. have guest verses and shit. Because we don't do any of that stuff anymore. It's just a band. Yeah, we're a band. But yeah. like so it's like I feel like it's been a really, really long time since I've actually put together like a rap album. Yeah. It's it's work. Like, yeah. It is. You, know, you got to <laughs> give credit to the people that are doing it because like. It's not, it's not easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you got to have experience to draw from. So it's like, I don't want to hear someone just rap just to rap. I want to hear someone that has like something interesting to say that has seen some shit that has like lived like an interesting life, you know? But then at the other side, it's like some rappers put out like three or four projects a year and they all sound the same. Yeah. So it's like, you got to find that balance where you're crafting something that's captivating and, and inspirational yeah. and you know i feel like it's really important as a creator to continue to create as much as you can yeah but i don't think that everything that you create should be released yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> dude <laughs> yes i couldn't agree more i've re i've you know i'll make verses all the time and you know we record it whatever sometimes it's great sometimes it's not sometimes a great verse i'll do like a demo version of and never re-record it and i'm like why didn't i re-record that or i'll take a verse that i wrote for someone that they never end up using or something and i'll mix it in and make a new song out of it like i do that kind of stuff all the time i guess it's like you say you just got to keep keep it going just always be working on something you mm -hmm. know it's the only way you're going to get anything done you know? yeah it's there's there, there's too much potential to like put things off until the next day and the next day and the next day are you a perfectionist I, I'm working on it. I yeah. think for a while I was, but I'm getting better at that. I I came to a kind of like a standstill with this new album because I couldn't tell if it was like a mix of like uninspired, uh, like no inspiration, being a perfectionist, like, you know, I'm writing these bars and I'm like, uh, I could rewrite this. I can make this better. I can make this better. I can make this better, you know, because what will happen is like you, you're right. You have to put stuff out. Just put it out. You know what I mean? Stop sitting on things. Just put it out. I got to train myself to do that. But at the same time, it's like I hate when I go back and listen to a song I did like six years ago or something. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like cringy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I say something that's Dude, like I, I honestly I had, uh, you know, a pretty a reverse effect recently and this is what's kind of been helping me with this perfectionist shit where um a buddy of mine was like yo like i was thinking about that like an old song of yours that you did it was stuck in my head the other day he's like is that anywhere online i was like yeah everything's on my band camp he's yeah. like no way so he's like on his phone going through my band camp and like listening to old shit and granted this is just like coming through cell phone speakers but i'm like listening to these mixes that i did like 10 years ago and i'm like this sounds better on the phone now than the new shit that I just showed you. Mm. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. I really don't know what it was, but I had to like go back in and like to the mixes that I was working on now and like really try to figure out. And I think it's just a matter of like, you get too lost in the sauce. And I think I was getting too caught up and like, Oh, I need to make sure that I'm DSing all these vocals properly. And like, not like, Pay, like, paying attention to like all of these things that I wasn't paying attention to at all back then. Yeah. And I think the reason why that mix sounded good was because mm. literally it's just a beat vocals on top of it. You can hear it. Yeah. Now I think I'm like trying too hard to mix stuff sometimes. Yeah. So I need to like unlearn some yeah. of that, like yeah. that stuff that supposedly makes, you know, it's like the proper way to do things. But yeah. I think sometimes it just like squashes and fucks up everything. That's like, uh, like Makami, like, his recordings have like such a rawness to him. And it's kind of like the same thing. Like, I don't think he does any extra production. Like, like he just records in like his closet or something Yeah, and puts it. And it sounds like, I love the way it sounds. It's distinct. It's signature. You know, I think you're right. Um, I guess it depends 
you know, well, you're doing this stuff yourself. So I, I, I don't mix and master my own stuff usually. Yeah. Like I'll do a little bit here and there, but I don't do it to that extreme. So I could see how you would get that, you know? Yeah. I think for me, it's been trying to really, I genuinely want to learn how to produce better. It's always, you know, about improving my knowledge and my skill set. And I think that whenever I'm mixing my own stuff, the only time I will allow myself to get like lost in the sauce of it is I genuinely feel like, oh, me taking the extra time to do this or redo something or remix something is actually going to make me a better engineer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, there are times too, like just with what, with what I was just talking about, where I think you can definitely over mix things. Yeah. And I think it's important just to like take time away from your mixes, you know, don't listen to it for a couple of days, yeah. then listen to it again on a different set of speakers or somewhere you're not used to listening to shit. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. word. Or you'll be like, oh, fuck. So I kind of do the same thing when I'm making art. Like I'll overwork a piece. Like I'll do like a million highlight layers or something. You yeah. Know, whatever. But to go back to with the music, with this project I'm doing now, Green Giant 2, um, and maybe you could take this too for your process, but... Like CG, when he makes a beat, he'll give me the stems. We take it to the studio. I have the guy that's recording me and engineering it. He'll mix the beat based off of his stems. So CG's not doing it. He's just making the skeleton. Here you go. And I'm going to do my vocals. And then I'm letting the engineer take care of the rest. And it's very cut and dry and basic. And like, usually we have a mix done in like an hour. Yeah. We're not doing all that extra stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, I had made the first Green Giant with DJ Shea from Black Soprano Family, who's Benny the Butcher's like manager and DJ and producer and everything. So his process was pretty similar, but he did something different. Like he would listen to every bar on a loop and just go bar, 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 bar. And that's how he like engineered our our album. So that was interesting too, because he kind of did the same thing. He took the raw stems, mixed the beat up. Yeah took in the vocals, you know what I mean? And just made sure every bar was perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he, he wasn't like DSing everything, doing this, that. It was a couple, you know, a couple limiters, whatever. Yeah. In and out. So, I mean, you, you got to stop yourself from doing the overworking mm-hmm. stuff because you're going to take the presence out of it. You yeah. I mean? You're th- overcompress it. Whenever I'm working on, so like I'm working on like a, kind of like a, synth pop new wave sort of project with a friend of mine right now Mm -hmm. and the process is a lot simpler because it's all it's all electronic you know it's all drum machine synthesizers and mixing and recording that shit is really easy for me Mm -hmm. but with the band shit when i got like guitars and bass and live drums like that's the shit and trying to mix all that in because yeah we have, there's so much shit going on. You know what I mean? Like a session of ours, there's like 70 tracks. Mm -hmm. There's so much shit. So like mixing that is always a little bit more complicated for me. And that's the issue that I'm coming, uh, like I'm going through with our stuff because like, I feel like we're like still kind of inventing the sound and I'm trying to figure out what I want it to sound like and how I want it to sound and how do I mix all these instruments together? Cause it's not just like a bunch of samples and shit. So it's just, Oh, it's getting there. The album's almost done. I think it sounds pretty good, but it's Tight. been quite a journey. <laughs> do you do you do like live sound? Like have you mixed like yeah, the band I have, yeah. live? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it might be good to get someone that does that too to kind of come in and just, they probably know, you know, this, yeah. this should be here, that should be there. You know, one of those things. Yeah. I don't know. Just an idea. Yeah. No, I, th- I, I mean, overall, I think it sounds good and I'm just like, okay, this sounds all right. I think people aren't going to spend nearly as much time with this as I am. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the other thing I need to remember too. You know, it's like people, if I'm lucky, people are going to listen to the songs once and fuck with them. If I'm real lucky, they'll listen to them a couple times. Yeah. Expecting much more than that is just not realistic on my level. Unfortunately, that's because I mean, like even artists that I love, yeah, like people that like I fuck with heavy, like, you know, like Aesop put out new stuff and Uh I'm just like, yeah, I listened to this once and I like it a lot and I'll say it's really good and I might go back and listen to it again in a couple weeks. There's just so much shit. I have so much going on. Yeah. It's not that I don't love music. It's just the way that the amount of time that I have to interact with things, mm-hmm. I have to assume that like people that are fucking with my stuff or that like know me, they also have limited time and you just it's like 
okay, so let's just make something that's audible that sounds good. Do as good as I can, but maybe I shouldn't be so concerned over like, oh, like, could that guitar be one decibel louder? Could that drum, you know, like yeah. just that dumb shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's like you said, you gotta just train yourself to like, let it go. Yeah, I imagine it's probably like not too dissimilar from a comic book, which we'll get into because I, you've been putting in yeah. some fucking work and we got to talk about this. Yeah. But, you know, you put six months into something that people spend, you know, five, ten minutes reading. Yeah. And it's like, damn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to train myself to to work on like a professional like like deadline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just right now with all the things I have going on, it's like, it's going to be hard to snap back into that. I got to get like these other projects done. I can't keep starting new projects with what I still have other ones that are not finished. And at this point, you know, I was too lax on green giant too. I mean, I've been tapping in for two years to finish this album. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, I know CG is not happy with that time you know being wasted he wants to put everything out put everything out i'm like ah wait 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 you know what i mean just wait just wait i actually i couldn't be happier that we waited because i've got more features on the album than i expected including like some i got a i got a big one on there cool i'm happy about and that just happened in the past week so like thank god i was like eh, i could do one more i could do one more we should do one more i should get this you know what i mean so but yeah as far as the comic it's like so my schedule, what I would do is make myself work from like eight at night to like 12, one, two, three in the morning, at least get four hours in. So I was and then it would be like, well, if I get a panel done a day, you know, I can get two books done a year. Then it became, well, if I can get two panels done a day, I can probably get three books done a year. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of like the pace I was setting for myself and trying to achieve it. It takes forever, man. The coloring process takes forever. Yeah, I can't. I, I tried to do a comic <clears throat> in high school. Yeah, and I still have the boards actually down there from it. I got like fucking maybe eight pages in, and I was like, "Fuck this, dude! Yeah. I can't do it." Like, I just didn't. It's like the idea seemed cool until you start sketching everything. So like, like I was like, you know, trying to sketch ink story. Yeah color like i don't have that brain capacity Edit, like it's just, lettering, just not that, <laughs> yeah it's design and then you got to make sure it's like printable yeah which is another thing you got to know color theory you know you got to know how to set it up for like printing like dude it's 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 a lot <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about volantis let's bounce down to here yeah all that. right so what the fuck are we looking at tell me here what's going on oh that's uh mustaba he's uh he's a evil character i guess you could say he's uh introduced in issue four and uh he's got he's coming back in the book he's made a couple appearances since his initial uh introduction mustaba that's jupiter she's the main uh antagonist of the of the storyline for right now she's uh she's the great grandmother of our main character carlos and his brother cassius and their sister Cassandra, and she is the founder of the city of Aguanile, which is one of the last human civilizations on Earth. And she's basically a tyrant. Okay, all right. That's Carlos. That's our main character slash hero of the book. Um, he's basically like he's fed up with evilness and tyranny and wants to like freeze people, basically. Okay, which means he has to go against his own family. Shit. This is Maya. Um, she's a character that Carlos encounters on the first issue. Uh, very mysterious. Uh, she's the only character in the book with like, I guess you could say special powers. But what it is, is she draws elements and compounds out of like the atmosphere and surrounding areas. And she like can change the uh, compositions of it to produce different effects. Like she could take like the oxygen out of water, concentrate it and breathe it. So she could like breathe underwater. Wow. You know what I mean? So yeah. She's got like different, the, the way her powers work is, is that Mustaba kind of has powers too. <clears throat> so Mustaba was born with a second brain and that brain atrophied <laughs> and became the pyramid that floats over his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, no, wait. All right. We got to get back to, uh, 
Yeah. All right, here. All right, that right. one. Okay. So, so being that he has two brains, he's twice as smart. He's twice as strong. You know, he's basically he has double the capacity of any normal human. All right, being. two hard drives. Got it. And his uh, double the RAM. His skin looks fucked up like that because the Earth is uh, was full of radiation. So his suit kind of like keeps him alive, contains him, and that's why he's got like that like pruny ugly face. That's fire. And yeah. then we had one more. Uh, I thought we, we skipped a yeah an animal. Yeah, so this is this is Virgil. Um, so what happens in the story, and it's in like the first issue. Um, so basically, in 2032, we send a mission to Mars. They bring back compounds and elements and samples and stuff. And once it interacts with our atmosphere, it activates this like dormant plague of like these like centipede aliens that overtake mm. Earth. So. What are the you know ruling government does? They they bomb the hell out of the earth. So <laughs> so like everything's toxic or whatever and radiated. But the um the animals all escape from the zoos, right? So if the animals escape from the zoos, they probably crossbreed and stuff like that. So he's a what do we call an Asterian tiger? He's like a genetically modified uh, tiger, and he is Carlos's like only companion, and it's his it's his homie, and it's his little source of power, and you know. They fuck shit up together. Got it. Yeah. So <laughs> in terms of like, you know, storytelling and learning how to, you know, just craft a story. What was that like for you? Um, It was a learning process for sure. And I didn't do it by myself. I mean, I came up with the idea, right? So I started coming up with this. I want to say 2014. I just have like flashes in my brain and like dreams of like random shit. Yeah. And I would just start like sketching out like what I would see or what, what like I could retain. So like I, I had like the, the whole gunslinger thing with Carlos, like he was originally like really just a gunslinger. Like he had like the hat and everything and it's, and it's changed since then it's evolved. And I had the idea for Maya and, and then it was like, what are they doing? You know what I mean? And then I had like these weird, like visuals in my head of like a wasteland and basically, I I just kept like putting things together and I just kept creating more. And I'm like, well, this could work with this because this and this and that. And at the same time, I was studying um, engineering, uh, specifically like ecological engineering, like, um, like, you know, solar panels, like green building technology, windmills, stuff like that. So I was yeah. like really deeply immersed into that. So I was taking that science that I was learning and I was like, hmm, well, I could incorporate this in the future because it's a hundred years from now. The story takes place presently a hundred years from now. And um, I was like, well, that would make sense that they would have that. That would make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wanted totally. to make it, I wanted to make it like realistic. That's why I don't have people with powers. Like it's not like a superhero. It's not a superhero story. Yeah. It's a family drama. Okay. With like magic realism. Yeah. Like cool elements and like random shit that like, you know, might be feasible a hundred years from now. Cause who the fuck knows? Look at us. Do you think a hundred pe people a hundred years from now, like thought we'd be doing like this podcast here? Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like drinking coffee. Like my coffee is coming. My beans are coming from another country. Like, you know, <laughs> 3000 miles away. I'm drinking like this roasted bean juice you know, speaking through a microphone, they probably didn't even know what a micro, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a microphone would probably been like a million dollars to produce back then. You know what I yeah. mean? So who knows? But, and anyway, it gave me like an inspiration, like just something like I could build off of like a solid base. So with the story, um, so I kind of crafted this idea, you know, I thought of like, when you start a story, you don't start it from the beginning. Like shit's already happening. So, I kind of told like in a flashback sequence how the world got to be where it is, but I didn't go like too deep in depth because now I can go back and fill it in as I go. But anyways, so that's one of the first things I learned. You know, I just read like basic like story structure, you know, hero's journey, all that stuff. I tried to, I tried to not incorporate it because I wanted to be different, but it, it's just naturally progresses into that. So with the first book, I drew it, you know, I had the idea and I drew it. And, but I didn't, I don't think I really wrote too much of a script. So I took all the pages when I was done and I linked up with my buddies and, you know, we laid it out and we just pretty much came up with the script overnight. Uh, my buddy, Chad. So Chad helped me write the first four books. And basically what we would do is we would just link up 
smoke some weed <laughs> and like <clears throat> I'd have these ideas of where I want this story to go. Yeah. Like I have right now, you know, I know how the book ends and I could tell this story for the rest of my life, but I know how it ends. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to change that. It's so like unique. It's never been done before, you know? So everything I have is, is leading towards something that like, man, I've got things that I've introduced that I'm never going to touch for like 10 years. Yeah. That's fun though. <laughs> like you're going to have to go back and be like, this dude planned it out like that. Huh? And I'd be like, yeah, I did. But anyways, um, so the first, so after that we would, um, we would link up, you know, grab some drinks or whatever. Um, and I would just start thumbnailing stuff and we would be like, yo, what's happening? Well, I want to bring in this guy and this is what he does. And this is where this is going. And this is why this is happening. And we would just, I would literally thumbnail an entire book. And like come up with like half the script and, and we would do that and come back and build from there and, and develop it as we got, as we went, basically. Then it got to a point where I was like, well, this process is taking too long. And I linked up with another guy, Peter Badami, and he, he started writing like full scripts. He's like, yo, I kind of want to write. I'm like, dude, you should come write. You know, he was an early, early supporter and everything. So I was like, yeah, dude, write a script. And we linked up and. You know, I gave him some ideas of what I wanted to do. And a couple of weeks later, I had like a full script and then I just interpreted it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I change things as I go. I have to, I've got continuity. I like serve as an editor too, you know? So I got to, I got to fix in the continuity, fix in what's, what I have planned coming up. You know, I have to put that little foreshadowing in. So we're basically at that stage for the past couple issues. And now it's more or less like a rough outline I'll do some pages, then we'll come back together, do the dialogue and everything. So it's it goes back and forth. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just oh, it's it's different with every issue. Yeah. I I I I've been doing a lot more uh music video work recently mm -hmm. for uh my band and that new project that I was telling you about where like, you know, we're we're like writing stories and uh I'm like actually like storyboarding everything and making the shots and I'm other people were filming them, but I'm editing everything. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun because I've always had an interest in film, but I never really had the resources to like to get into it in the way that I have been like probably since the start of this year. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I used to storyboard my videos. I think it's the best way to go. I know a lot of people don't. They think it's like limiting and everything, but it's like, I'd rather go in with a plan than, not nah, yeah you know what i mean yeah i think that the thing that people overlook in terms of like a music video is like you have a very specific time frame it's not like you know a movie where there's like oh if a scene ends up being an extra 10 seconds it's not a big deal you know the song's only three minutes right so if you have all of this shit that you want to do you gotta i like i like storyboard everything to the songs so mm -hmm. i know like oh well we wanted to do this extra thing we wanted to have this extra storyline happen but there's nowhere to put it there's literally no time in the song to do it. Mm -hmm. it. It also relies on your your DP too. Like if they have the, you know, a good eye to catch things in an interesting way, or are they just going to like shoot head on? So it's like, if I can give you a storyboard and you can see how I kind of want the shot to look, yeah. then you get closer to what you're actually looking for. It really depends on your concept and like, how hard and how big of a budget and all that, you know, comes into play. It's like, I get the, I get the whole thing of like doing like just straight up street video. Like, yeah, we're just going to film you and do this and that. And like, okay, I'm cool with that. Sometimes other times I want to do more cause I'm an ambitious person. I have ambitious yeah. ideas. The thing is, is like, now I just complicated it like tremendously. And that's like, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I think like, you know, it's like one of those things where a lot of the times with, the the street videos i like i don't know i've never done that for any of my rap shit i've always had some weird concept with all my mm -hmm. videos uh just because it's like i just don't think i just don't see the value in it yeah. at least coming from me because like i'm not cool or hot <laughs> or fashionable or like anything where like oh, okay i get that there are some motherfuckers that 
are, you know, reasonably attractive looking people that look good and can flex and mm -hmm. they can get away with just being like yeah. them yeah. next to some graffiti on a wall and people will be like, that's tight. I enjoy yeah. looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> I am not that guy. So it's like, I need like, you know, a fucking weird alien or yeah. some shit to be in my video. So it's entertaining. I'm a goofball. Yeah. You got to have some kind of, I agree. I think you do need to have some kind of hook. Like I'm over, I like... We're going to shoot a video. Okay. What, what's going to happen? Rap in front of the camera. I'm like, why? I yeah. do that all the time. Like, why don't we do something cool? Why don't we push the limits? You know what I mean? I don't know. Is it a, I get, like I said, it comes down to budget. Are you going to pay someone, you know, X amount? Or are you going to pay them three times as much? You know what I mean? It's, where's your expectations lie? You know, mm -hmm. it's, that's kind of like the, the issue I have. Cause I'm not, I don't know. It's, it's, really comes down to the brass tacks of it. It's like, how much does this guy want to work? How much do you want to work? How much do you want to put in? How much do you want to put in? You know what I mean? And, you know, sometimes when you have a group of people and you're trying to do that, you would think you'd have a more ambitious project like lined up and then people just don't want to put money in. It's like, well, if you don't want to put money in, don't expect much, you know? Yeah. It's like, you got to be realistic going into these things. But I appreciate people like you that go the extra mile and create like a, a interesting concept and like, think outside the box and try to do something different. I, I can't say for me personally, that that's always the thing, the product that I'm going to put out. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have the time to, to do everything, to play all those roles anymore. <laughs> no doubt. You dude. know what I mean? Like I gotta just, I need other people to step in. Like if that's what's going to take, that's what it's going to take. Yeah. It seems like you've been able to find a way to, you know, utilize other creatives to help, you know, mm -hmm. get, you know, to help get your ideas off the ground and allow you to focus more on the things that you're really good at and have other people that are good at things. Mm -hmm. And just like teamwork seems like it's been a big part of your success. And I think a big part of my um, not success, not success, whatever I would call it, like my my failures probably stem from my lack of willingness to work with other people. Yeah. And I need to get better at that. I'm trying. I mean, acknowledgement's the first step, I suppose. <laughs> Definitely. But like, <laughs> but like ultimately you're the artist, like who are you doing it for? You know what I mean? At the yeah. end of the day, you're doing it for yourself. So for you to want to be in charge of all those things, it makes complete sense. And you know, no one's got a gun to your head. No one's telling you you have to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do it at your pace. Do how you want and, and put out the best thing that you think is is the best, you know? Yeah. So it that's and that's like I said, like that's been my approach with this new record I'm doing. It's like I'm not going to force anything. I'm going to do it when I want to do it and I want to do it in the environment I want to do it. in. that's that's an issue I have is I hate going to like a shared studio space mm. and I hate when there's like people there. Mm, yeah like go away yeah if i'm paying for like the studio i want it empty i don't want like anyone listening i don't want like a random person like judging me i feel like they're judging me you know sure it's like i, I just can't get get it out you know but um the i was doing another album like mindset has another album i don't know what the status of it is at this point but um you know we're going to legit studio um GCR, it's a studio that um, the bass player from the Google Dolls owns. Okay, so it's it's the it's probably the top studio in Buffalo. Um, and we were doing stuff out of there, and it's like, man, I'm in this giant room with like every instrument you can even think of. I like I feel like a legit artist. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm I'm where I should be, and I don't have people coming in, and it's you know it's a it's a pristine environment and I go in there and I, I end up killing everything in like one take. That's all I want. You know what I mean? So whatever that has to do with whatever we're talking about, I don't know, but <laughs> well, I think environment and the people that you're around is huge. Yeah. And I think it's, it's very, very easy. And this isn't even something that is uh, unique to hip hop mm -hmm. because most of the hip hop that I've recorded has been in like, bedrooms and closets right. and shit you know what i mean i've never recorded any rap shit in a professional studio mm -hmm. but 
my bands have recorded in professional studios and it's the same shit where there's always like random people that just happen to be there like an engineer's yeah. friend or someone's just wanted to come hang out for the session today i'm like what the fuck yeah no fuck off yeah Scram. yeah i don't get that like if you if you follow like rappers on instagram or whatever and you always see them in the studio and there's like 18 people there it's like bro fuck off <laughs> yeah how do you get anything done i don't know and and it's weird too because like okay so when we were doing green giant we were doing it at shay's studio so like all of BF BSF was like in and out while while I'm recording. You know what I mean? And these dudes are like, you know, pretty legit. Like they're street, like they're street dudes. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to re write my, you know, spit my raps. And I got like, you know, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't say shady environment, but it's like, you know, I know these people are judging me. Dude, I'm recording in front of Benny's like fucking group. Yeah. Like the best rapper that's out right now. I'm re I'm recording my verses in front of like his like entourage. No pressure. You, you, know what I mean? you know what I'm saying? Like fucking uh El Camino is making uh walk on water or what, what I don't know, walking something that I think he's walking on water. But like in the same we were splitting, you know, studio sessions. And I'm just like, I don't want this dude like listening to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's making like a project with my producer now. You know what I'm saying? It's like weird. It's like, I feel like I, I just, I'm very protective of what I'm making and I don't want anyone to hear a single like snippet of it until yeah. I'm ready to put it out because I feel like I've been ripped off by other people in the past. Yeah. And I don't want to say I'm paranoid saying that, but like I've definitely come up with like good lines and good ideas and I've definitely seen other people take it and like even beats and samples. I've seen other people that have been in my circle. Like I've seen like that sample appear on their album. It's like, Sure. We, we're we working in the same studio. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I'm very, like, I don't want, I don't want a fucking soul in there. Yeah. I want, I'm, I want complete, like, you don't get it. <laughs> like, it's you so, don't get it yeah. till it's ready. It's so weird. Like, even the thing that's funny is that, like, you don't even have to be necessarily in the studio for that shit to happen. I've had people that I've played shows with mm -hmm. rip me off on shit. Like fucking like, you know, like come up to me after a set like, yo, like that was tight. Like, what was that sample or what was this? Mm -hmm. And then like my band, and like, you know, my bandmate was like, yo, did you listen to that record that or you know, that song that so-and-so put out? It has our fucking shit in it. Like after we had played a show together. Like, how can you be that blatant of like a thief? I've called people out before because I don't care. I'm not scared yeah. of anyone. If you if you willingly steal something for me, I will call you out. Like I don't care. What do I have to lose? You're gonna kill me? Like come on. Sure. Like grow up. Sure. It's know. like you know for me it was just like okay well you know I didn't get the clearance for this sample. No, it's not my. It's if you whatever. However you find it, you find whatever. It's fine. Even if it's a bar though, I mean yeah. It's it's so dumb. It was so dumb. You don't have to love me as a as an MC or whatever but like you can bet your bottom dollar i have at least one line in every verse that like sticks out like you could put me on a track with like the best rapper in the world you will remember one of my lines i guarantee it like you listen to the song and be like yo you said that and i'd be like yeah you'll forget how good you know so and so was da -da 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 -da, you know whatever like i said that one line you're just like ah oh, man yes i think that's like my key like, I don't care. Like, I don't know. I'm talking myself into a hole right well, now. Well, <laughs> no, I think that, you know, we're a little off topic, but in terms of just songwriting, I think that it's really important to not just focus on the hook being the hook of your song. I think you got to have hooks throughout your whole verse, hooks everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not the hook, but everything is yeah. a hook. You got to have like, so my, my idea is to always have a strong opening and closing line, obviously. And a good flow. And, you know, I kind of have like a internal checklist that I kind of go on. You know what I mean? When I'm crafting, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I come up with like a bad metaphor or something, I'll put in like a placement metaphor. And then I'm like, eh. I don't like it. I'll, I'll do it just to get the verse done. Like, if I get stuck on like a spot, I'll throw something in just to just to keep it going. And then I'll have to come back and change it. It's like it's like painting a wall. It's like that spot's not covered. I'm gonna have to hit that again. Oh yeah. After it dries. So what I do is I like to do a demo version, like at home. Yeah. And then do 
listen to it a bunch, then do a studio version. My beef with that, though, is, dude, sometimes the demo version, like, it's just so raw and I'm like comfortable. The environment's good. And I'll say, like, you know, things in my previous that are like, great. I can't replicate that spontaneity in the studio. I've done this. I've done the same thing. Yeah. It happens a lot because I get that the pressure's off. You're not really thinking about it. Yeah. And I've had the other thing happen too, where I'll demo out a track and it may not be the best, mm -hmm. but I've gotten used to it sounding like that, even though I know it's not supposed to, like the cadence might be a little off, Yeah. but when I'm trying to record it for real, I keep fucking up because I listen to the demo oh, version yeah, too many yeah, times yeah. and it's like burned in my brain mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be some sort of way. Yeah, it's a tough thing to balance, but you know, you just got to do it and figure out what sounds best. And yeah, I trust me, there's a million recordings I listen to and I'm like, oh, that one part sucks. <laughs> but at the same time, it's things like that that also make it great. Yeah, because like flaws are amazing. If you use a flaw to your advantage, it's like the most beautiful thing ever. And I think you got to embrace that, too. Yeah, I more recently. I, I find myself getting hung up on like, oh, like that doesn't sound like me, mm -hmm. but I kind of like that in a weird way. Cause it's like, oh, that, that, maybe I'm just trying different things. I'm doing different things with my voice. And that's kind of cool instead of being like, oh, I sound the same on every single track. Like, I don't want that. Yeah. I want to have a sound, but I don't want to be, Are you I don't want to have a predictable sound. Talking like your vocal cadence. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like either like what I would do rhythmically or like the way I would enunciate things or if I'm going like a little bit more loud or if I'm being kind of like, you know, more spooky and weird and like yeah. dark sounding, like it's like a medley of things. I'm just trying like different delivery techniques yeah. instead of just sounding like, like I do now, but rapping. So you're, you're just like kind of always experimenting. I, it seems like, yeah, I, I kind of like in my approach now, I just streamlined all that. I've come to the conclusion that I can write good hooks. You know, I'm not really a singer. I'll do it like kind of like to fuck around. Yeah. And like if I like I'll leave it in there because it's interesting and unique. But for the most part, I know that my I'm exceptional in like just like a pocket, like when I'm in the pocket. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Like I just get these stunts at New Buckle, New was before we blew up. I'm tuned up. I got maneuvers and boosts to help me move stuff. Like, like I get in that zone. I'm like, I'll I'll just stick to that. And if I can do like a verse, a full verse or more than that. And that entire cadence and just ride that flow. I love it. Yeah. It's like, dude, I just came in like a fucking drill and I'm just crank it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So like, that's been my approach over the past, like two, three years is just, dude, you, I spit bars, right? That's, that's it. I'm not going to try to sing. I'm not going to try to do this and that. Like I'm going to find that, like I said, find that pocket and just, Dig in. <laughs> and that's all I'm doing. In terms of the art and working on this comic, do you find like a piece in terms of just like, oh, like whenever you're doing panels for the book, like you're lost in this. You don't got to worry about other people in the room or like, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like being at the studio with 18 motherfuckers that you mm -hmm. don't know. You know, it's a different way to create. Like you could really be in your zone. Do you find peace in that? Oh, God, yeah. I, uh, you know, I got a studio at my house and I got the desk and put on a podcast or something or random YouTube videos, which always turn into weird things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, whatever the algorithms are, you know, and, uh, yeah, just jam. Like I, I know what I have to do, and I, like I said, I thumbnail things. I figure out how to visually storytell things, and you know, it's just getting it done. It's like, yeah, it's peaceful. Um, it's amazing to see the final product. You know, I'll do certain pages, certain artwork that I'm like, I love. You know, I think that's like when I get when I can visually look at something and I'm like, yeah, I nailed it. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Cause I don't nail everything. Cause it's like you said, you got time, like time is against you. So a lot of times I have to speed, I have to take as many shortcuts as possible. So I'm really just trying to much like how I would wrap streamline to what I'm good at. You know what I mean? Like that laser focus, I'm trying to do the same thing with the book and with the artwork. You know what I mean? So it's like, yes, it's very peaceful. Um, 
but people like to disturb my peace. I have a dog. He's whining. <laughs> and I have like neighbors and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, I don't like I'll, I want to be just like in a vacuum and create, you know, uh-huh. and if if I want other people in, I'll invite them in. You know, I don't want that's just how I am. I don't like to craft surrounded by a ton of people, I, which is weird because I'll do the conventions and stuff and I got to draw and I feel the pressure. But it, that's tough, too, because what I should be doing is like a cheap, easy, like sketch thing. And I'm like, no, I'm going to draw like a Stephen Platt style, like cable with like all the detail in the world, you know? Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, I don't like the I like to craft and be calm. Yes. When it comes to the, the the future, you know, none of us are getting any younger. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, you have a a family and all of these other things, you know, if you had to like predict, like, do you see like the art or the music being the thing that you focus more time into? Or are you just going to try to always just do whatever is working? I mean... I feel like I could rap for another like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel, I feel great. I feel, I feel better this morning. You know what I mean? I feel great every day. Yeah. I get up, I, I fucking do some push ups, drink some coffee and I'm like, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I feel like I just got good at rapping. I say this like every two years. I'm like, oh, I feel like I just got good. Like I felt green giant was like a big, uh, step forward from like my previous projects. I feel like Green Giant 2 is even a higher step from that. I feel like my work on the last Mindset album that we haven't put out yet is, you know, amazing. Like this year, I, my ver, I like every verse I wrote this year, I like love. I think they've been great. Um, the artwork is taking me places, gave me notice too. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever works because I'm, I'm enjoying both of it. I'm not going to, yeah. I mean, I'm, Dude, I might take up pottery. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm going to get obsessed with that. And then yeah. you'll be like, I'm going to be selling like s- sculptures and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. Actually, what I do want to do, I want to I want to start a vineyard. Okay. <laughs> why? I don't know why. I, I fuck don't, with I don't, that. I don't need to. You know what I mean? But I want to. I just think it'd be cool. Yeah. You have many vineyards in Buffalo? Uh, Actually, not, not in Buffalo, but like the Finger Lakes. Okay. Yeah. The Finger Lakes are like swarmed with wineries. Okay. So yeah, like Seneca Lake has like, dude, like hundreds of wineries. But whatever, I'd like to you know, grow my own shit. Why not? Do you, are you like a like a wine person? Oh. You just like the idea of having a vin- like having it. I like a glass of wine here and there. But <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I just so do you think cool. it would be like maybe like the process of just having it and like tending to it and running yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I just like different income streams and stuff, and I th- and I like to be creative, and I think like. Hey, I got a bottle of wine. You know, you want some wine? I got bottles of wine. Yeah. Come over, you come over to my house, try my wine. You know, I just want, I like something like that. Yeah. I, li- I like the idea of finding diverse ways to generate income. Yeah. Where it can still be kind of creative, but you know, it's going to be something that you don't necessarily have to sell. Like the art of it isn't what sells it, which is like interesting about something like wine, right? Because mm-hmm. it's definitely a creative process, but not many people are like going to buy wine because they like the art of the wine. They just want wine, you know, versus like music. It's like the complete opposite. It's like the art has to be on a level that speaks to somebody personally in order for them to want to engage with it monetarily. I just like to create things. And, um, I don't know. I just think it'd be an interesting thing to do. I mean, cause like you got to have like, the soil's got to be right. The, you know, the level of moisture has to be right. The grapes have to grow like the right elevation. They have to have the right air. Like there's so many different like things into it. That's just intriguing that like, I'm naturally like, sorry, I naturally like to like reverse engineer things. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just something else for me to do. Mind you, I don't have the time for it right now. But I would love, <laughs> I would, ideally I'd like to do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's in my future plans somewhere down the line. All maybe, right. maybe when I retire from rap. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that so that's that's gonna be it from from rap to wine, but yeah. still doing art. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a game plan for I me. I mean, it really depends on like like 
Like what would change? What could change for me? Do I get a record deal? Do I get like a million dollar advance? Like, I don't know. Is that, is that on the table anymore? Who knows? Do I get a publishing deal? Like, do I sell to Netflix? I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, dude, it's so hard to become successful. I mean, like for, for every triumph you see, there's probably 10 times as much failure. Yeah. It's, I feel like we're in an era where it's really easy to be successful, like temporarily. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you can have a, like a TikTok that blows up or, right. you know, a, like a song that does good, but like long-term success seems like such a foreign, impossible idea now. Yeah. I could be wrong, but it just seems like, I don't know how anybody, how you can like maintain longevity with like the current system. I'm too stupid to stop. well i think the other thing too is like you know for the both of us i mean i think we got into this just out of a general passion for wanting to create and like the money's tight if it happens but like that's not going to stop me from trying to write music because you know whether um i need to do something with my time Mm -hmm. it's like i would be doing this either way right so yeah i it blows my mind because i don't know what people do like (laughs) because people (laughs) Because people always say, like, yo, how do you do this and that? How do you do this and that? I'm like, one, I love it, so I'm always doing it. Two, it's like, what what do you do? Yeah. Like, what, what, what do you do with your time? Yeah, there's so much time in a day. And anytime somebody's, like, asking me, like, yo, uh, I want to start a podcast or I want to start making beats and, like, you know, asking me advice on, on what, how to get started or what they should get. I'm like, the only thing you need is to actually give a fuck yeah. about wanting to do it. Just do it. And once you got that, you'll figure out the other shit. Yeah. You got to work some extra hours to get a laptop that can run your beat stuff or, you know, whatever equipment you need for whatever you want to do, do it. Yeah. You know, it's not hard to make money. It's just, I think it's hard for people to be motivated to make money. It's that. And it's being consistent. Consistency is key. Patience obviously. too. Yeah. You be patient. It doesn't happen overnight. I think I said consistency is key in that verse for your album. You, you might have, yeah. Consistency is key. You ain't stopping me. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember, I think, I think it starts like, ain't got time for procrastinators. Yeah. Something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Half the betas. <laughs> probably like a master bait. Yeah. Like oh my God. I should have fucking queued it up so no, I could play it. That'd no, be funny. it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <man. laughs> but yeah, uh, no, man, I just, I don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So the only thing I can do is try. I mean, and as I try, I get better and, you know, products get better. And as products get better, more people are interested and more people support and you get, you can get more money. And you know what I mean? Like, it's just a natural progression. Um, you know, ideally, what would I love? Um, I would love a publishing deal. You know, I would like, I don't know if I want to work for like a company. Are we talking art wise? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if I could work for like, like I would do something for Marvel. I would do something for DC, but like, I don't know if that'd be like a long-term thing that I could depend on. Sure. Like, I don't know if I want to grind out like a fantastic four comic every month. I might, you know, I'd have to try it, you know, but it's at this point, since I do so many different things, I do the coloring and do the, you know, this, that, and the third, it's like, I need someone to tell me like, stop, like, just do this. Yeah. You know, um, I had sent a book to Jimmy Palmiotti, who's, you know, he's, he's a fame, he's a writer now, but he was an inker like all throughout the nineties. He's a very influential inker. Um, he's done a lot of stuff. He actually like is one of the reasons Marvel got out of bankruptcy in the nineties. Um, he, along with Joe Quesada, like started this brand called Marvel Knights and, you know, Joe Quesada was like the editor in chief of Marvel for like 15 years after that. So together, like they kind of brought the company back up from bankruptcy. But anyways, I sent him a book and I was like, hey, man, just tell me what you think. And he was like, stick to drawing. Like, you know what I mean? Like get your drawing and like inking level, like skills back up and then worry about coloring. And I didn't like, you know, I took that to heart and I would just go to conventions and show as many editors and artists and stuff, my stuff and just get feedback. And what, how, what can I do to get better? It's like you do that and don't take it personally. Cause yeah, you know, criticism is harsh for a reason. It's cause you're not seeing your flaws. 
And you're not going to address them if you, or you're not going to like fix them if you don't address them yourself. So to have someone point it out, like listen to them, listen to what they say, take it to heart, and then fucking apply that shit. And don't be like a little, like, don't be a wuss about it. You know? Yeah. That was, that was, if you want to get good, like, that's the kind of like advice you need. You need swift kicking ass. You need to be recording in a studio with the best rapper in the world's entourage, like watching you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Like, I don't like doing those sketches like at conventions because I don't like people watching me. It's like, man, you're not going to get paid, you know? So I got to like, I got to overcome those obstacles and just realize that like, there's a million people out there. They all want to do the same thing as you. So you either better bring it or like, don't come, like don't show up. Mm -hmm. Don't show up if you're not going to bring it. So that's, like, I get very intense when it comes to that. That's that's like like when you said, am I am I peaceful and I'm crafting? I am, but I I'm doing it like I got a chip on my shoulder. Not that I'm angry at anyone, but it's such a competitive like world out there. You know what I mean? And it's like you said, like you put a song out, people might listen to it once, twice, maybe if you're lucky. It's yeah. like I understand that. So that's why I gotta like do the most to captivate, to like pull you back in, to like you know I understand that. I I take that in and I'm like, yo, is this worth listening to again? If I was a listener, would I want to listen to it again? Like, yeah, I got to bring that cadence in. I got to do this, do that, you know? Like, I'm not going to put out dog shit and expect people to, like, love it. Mm -hmm. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. And the other thing, too, that's really interesting about music that I think is easy to overlook sometimes is that, like, a lot of people don't listen to music the same way that maybe we do. You know, mm -hmm. they're not picking apart every nuance of your verse. Right. Like it's like your voice sounds good on top of a beat that has a good vibe. And then for a lot of people, that's all they need. Yeah. Like they just want something they can fuck with like that works. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you got to make sure that like on top of, you know, delivering the artistry and the message that you want to do creatively, is this like a good vibe in general? Right. Like if I just, if I didn't understand the English language, would I fuck with this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's something I've I've learned along the way too is that it's better to make the words flow and rhyme and just sound sonically pleasing as opposed to like what you want to say. Like I might want to put like put like 12 syllables into a bar, but like we all know it should only be 8. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like I want to do that, but it's not good for the song. And, and that applies to, okay, so you know how there's like rappers that'll da -da 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 -da, like they're going in and in and like trying to say like a million things and like being overly descriptive and like, it's like too much. <laughs> they're at the, they're saying so much. They're saying nothing at all. Right. Yeah. It's like, dude, you got like, you got like this six minute, like freestyle, basically like song. And you're trying to get this incredible like concept off to me. But like, bro, I'm like tired of listening to you. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, bro, make it smooth. Like, I think that's a lot of things people don't understand either. They just force too much on the listener. And it's like you said, it's like, if you're just playing in the background, it doesn't sound pleasing. Yeah. You're like, eh, click. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck is this dude going off about right yeah. now? It's just too much. That's like how I said, like, like, once again, back to being in that laser focus in that pocket where I know I'm like, yo, this space on this song is for me. I'm going to stay in there, but I want to be like almost hypnotic, like the way I flow. Like, I want you to just bob your head, listen. Oh, okay. Done. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I want. So that's kind of like, that's just been my approach and it, I think it's working. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hell yeah. So... One more time before we completely wrap up everything on here, I feel like we should, I'd like to plug the book Hell yeah. again, let people know about this, where they can get it and maybe anything else that you want to plug. We can. Yeah, for sure. It. Um, so yeah, Volantis is available. I have individual issues one through eight. Um, I have a trade paperback, which is the first six issues collected and it's got some, you know, little extras in there. Yeah. If you go to the products, um, I have original art for sale. I have um, a new book coming out November 13th, 
called Midnight Ouroboros, which is uh, a tie-in for an album um, created by Deuce Ellis, who's a producer MC out of Brooklyn. So I collaborated with him for like this mini comic about like space Buccaneers, which is pretty cool. Um, I'll be returning to Volantis to finish issue nine. Um, I did start it, but like I've just been so slammed. Um, after that, when is this debuting? I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head. Okay. Well, I'll say it. Anyways. It'll be a few weeks. Okay. So I have this new project. I wrote this over the, uh, I'll just stay. Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote this script. Uh huh. It's called Tough Stuff. It's a uh, my cat friend over here, and I wrote it over the summer, and it's like the best thing I've ever written. It's fucking. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's uh, it's thirty six pages. Um, I have started drawing it. This is like the cover. It's a wraparound cover. Um, I'm gonna do a kickstart. I've just been kind of like waiting for the time to like be present so I can do it. But oh my god. Please like follow up with me because you need to get this book in your life. I'm going, it's set in the 90s. So I'm like, well, I want to do like a hollow foil, like, oh, fuck yeah. Everything. yeah. Um, so in the gist, it's uh, Robert Crumb meets Robert Liefeld. Okay. <laughs> That's my tagline. Um, dude, it's great. Tough stuff is a troubled alley cat that has to save spring break in 1993. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I'll have a Kickstarter for that coming up. And I, I implore you, dear God, I implore you to like get in on it because it's amazing. And I'm going to create like this beautiful package. I like bundle, but um, you can get stuff at uh, volantiscomics.bigcartel.com. Um, you can order directly through me online. You know, if you want to hit me up on like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, Twitter, um, my Facebook and Instagram that I had for over a decade got stolen from me. So I had to start over again a couple months ago. So if my like counts are all low, that's why it's kind of <laughs> shitty. But, um, on Instagram, it's solstice underscore art and Facebook. It's my name, Delgado, Kevin. Uh, my name is Kevin. My last name's Delgado, but I had to do it reverse because they got me blocked on there for some reason. <laughs> Probably because I said some mean things about our uh, president in office right now. <laughs> but he's gone, so we'll be gone. Yeah. Um, anyways, I don't want to get political because you know, whatever. But anyways, um, so yeah, you can hit me up on that. Um, Twitter, it's Frigid Giant, no underscore, capital F, capital G. Um, I also have a website that's kevindelgado.co. Um, you can get my books in Buffalo at Queen City Bookstore, Gutter Pop Comics, and I think that's it for now. Gutter Pop also has an online store, um, and Phantom of the Attic in Oakland was carrying the paperback, and I have to get in contact with them, but if anyone in the Pittsburgh area wants them to pick up Volantis, tell them to carry it, and I'll, Hell yeah. I'll get it going. If you're in a different city or state, you know, I do ship directly. Um, if you have a comic book shop that wants to carry it or you think they should carry it, like let them know. Let me know. Like, let's connect those dots because I'm an independent publisher, man. I'm I'm doing this all myself. Yeah. I don't have a machine behind me. I don't have the distribution. If you're if you're a publisher, <laughs> I'm looking out. If you're a publisher, <laughs> I'm a workhorse. So let's talk. Cause I've got I've got ideas, man. I got it. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do like my Hollywood pitch. I got ideas. I'm out there. I'm working. I'm working for you. I want to be there for you. I want you to be there for me. We can work together. We can make it beautiful. We can craft something. <laughs> and then you hold that thing in your hands and it's beautiful. Let's do it. I'm here for you. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, I almost you almost got me to cry on camera. I was I was getting there. I was going method. We, um, we can go back to it. If I'm you going. This pitch is going really long. <laughs> this plug. Um, Green Giant 2 is on the way. We'll be, you know, on all the DSPs and stuff. If you want a vinyl, let me know. I want to make vinyl. It's expensive. So we got to figure something out. But I'm down for it. Yeah. And I got great features. I'm not going to tell you all of them because I'm going to wait till that project is done. I'd like to be in my vacuum. But I will say this. <sighs> I got one of my favorite rappers in the world on it. And like, it's sick. <laughs> cool. Hell yeah, dude. Well, I am really happy 
for you. I'm stoked. All the stuff that you're doing. I think it's awesome. You're in a good headspace. Got good people around you. You're doing cool work. Yeah. Can't ask for much more than no. that. Seems like you're kicking life's ass. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I am. <laughs> you're doing it. Dude. Fuck hey, yeah, dude. Man. COVID handshakes. It's all good. With that being said, <laughs> that is all, folks. Thanks so much for being here. One more time. Kevin, appreciate it. Thanks. I'll be back again next week. Same time, same place, same channel. You know the drill. My name is Sykes. Start the beat 2020. Woo, woo. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And we're done. That's a podcast. That was back with the shades. Styling and profiling. Look at that cool motherfucker y- right there. Why is that too expensive? So I just pepper in with Prada. <laughs> we're done. That's a podcast. That's a good one. <laughs>